this is what I believe, and I'm willing to die for it. Ublock Origin can be quite confusing when you want to use it beyond the install and forget default mode. It's definitely not self-explanatory, and maybe reading docs behind a browsing add-on isn't really your thing. Maybe you just want someone to show you how it's done, and then you are good to go. Well, if that's your case, this is what I'm going to try to do for you. Many people take uBlock Origin as an ad blocker, but that's a gross understatement. uBlock Origin has an incredible power and potential to protect you from virtually all malware, trackers, advertisers, hackers and creeps much better than any other blocker or even your antivirus software. On top of that, it will save you tons of money and time by loading web pages faster, using less bandwidth and saving you significant amounts of your hardware resources and battery. Just take a look at this benchmark. If you don't protect yourself, there are thousands of remote servers making requests on just a handful of your most favorite websites you visit daily. They have the audacity to track you without your consent and drain your power and bandwidth on top of that. When you learn to use uBlock Origin to its full potential, it will act as your top layer firewall that will block loads of malware circulating across the web. For example, with uBlock Origin in advanced mode, you would be immune to all of this. See, sometimes we can't say, I can do that. But what we can say, that it's possible. To make sure we are on the same page, we need to get some basic stuff out of the way first. uBlock Origin conducts its blocking in two ways, by static filtering and dynamic filtering. Static filtering is when uBlock Origin takes third-party filters to decide what it should block behind the scenes without user interaction. Dynamic filtering is where the user takes the initiative and can override static filtering. User can decide what to block or allow, taking control over the dictate of the static filters. By default, uBlock Origin doesn't enable you to engage in dynamic filtering and has only some third-party filters enabled. When you first install it, the uBlock Origins user interface is very simplistic in the default mode. You mostly have this big blue power button, which allows you to disable or enable blocking on the current website. If you want to disable blocking on just a single page, but keep blocking on the rest of the website, you can hold control and click. This is how you can create your easy whitelists, where you don't want uBlock Origin to be active. Before entering the advanced mode, you can also engage in something called cosmetic filtering. This is done by two useful tools, the Element Zapper and the Element Picker. They both essentially do the same, with the only exception that Zapper Mode is only temporary and Picker Mode is permanent. To enter the Zapper Mode, click on the flash icon on the very left below the blue power button. Then, pick any annoying element you want to get rid of. This will last until you reload the website. Do the same in the Element Picker Mode, but this time you are actually creating cosmetic filters that uBlock Origin is going to remember next time you visit the website. To view your filters, you can click on the dashboard icon on the very right and then click on the My Filters tab. If you want to revert your changes, you can easily delete your Picker Mode filters as if you were editing a Word document. If you want to inspect real-time network traffic, uBlock Origin allows you to do so via logger you can open by clicking the list icon. But for now, you don't need to worry about it too much. Before you become an advanced user, you should see something terrifying. Let's load TechCrunch.com and click on either Requests Blocked or Domains Connected. A side pane will pop up with all the information about distant requests made by third parties. Everything in the green now knows you have accessed this website. Google knows you're here, Facebook is watching, Twitter, Yahoo, Amazon, LinkedIn, all social media, whether you're logged in or not, have access to this information and they know it's you because they have your IP address, your unique browser and device fingerprints and, if you are not in a private mode, they have your browsing history too. This is why uBlock Origins Advanced User Mode is here to save the day. That some of you already know that it's hard. To become an advanced user, all you need is to click on the Open the Dashboard icon and under Settings, check the box next to I am an advanced user. Congratulations! You've now become an advanced user.
There is a required rating for this, but you don't need it if this video turns out to be enough for you. So let's look at what just happened. See, it's not that different, only now you can actually play around. So what the hell is going on here? To put it simply, in the first column, normal font means what requests are being made, while bold text means who is making those requests. Green indicates everything is allowed on that hostname, while red indicates everything is blocked, and yellow says something is blocked and something is allowed. Cells without any color indicate no rules are applied to them. You can see that uBlock Origin is already blocking a lot of stuff and that blocking comes from static filtering. uBlock Origin allows you to block requests dynamically. That means you can choose to block either through host names or by resource types or both. The second column represents global rules and third column represents local rules. The difference is that when you block something globally, it is going to affect all websites whereas blocking or allowing locally will make changes only on that particular website and not elsewhere. For example, I can choose to block third-party scripts locally, which is going to apply to this website only, or I can block scripts globally and then every website I visit will come with third-party scripts blocked automatically. The same goes for hostnames. You can choose to block a hostname locally, which will apply to the website you are currently on, or you can block this hostname globally and its request will never make it through your browser. What's great about uBlock Origin is that by default it is not going to save any changes made in the dynamic filtering, so when you leave your browsing session, it will be back to normal. This is to protect you from accidentally flooding your rule sets with bad rules, so that you always have a chance to go back. When you look at the left corner of the uBlock Origin panel, you can see an eraser icon and a padlock icon. Eraser helps you conveniently reverse all temporary changes. This lets you experiment what you can allow or block on certain websites. When you are satisfied with how your rules affect the website, you can click the padlock icon to save the temporary changes and make them your permanent rules. You can see your dynamic rule sets when you open the dashboard and click on My Rules tab. You'll understand this best in practice. The way you can interact with your blog origin revolves around three main modes, a default easy mode, medium mode and hard mode. It's not easy. Let's start from the easiest bit. The first thing you should do is to go to the settings pane of uBlock Origin dashboard and check the boxes next to prevent WebRTC from leaking local IP addresses and block CSP reports. After that, you're going to make one of the most powerful clicks in your life. She's almost done. I could launch a cyber nuke, but it'll completely fry his system. He's got a backup system at home. Is that a go for launch? Yes. What just happened? Armageddon, I'm afraid. Fuck society. Hover your mouse over the second column next to the third party frames row and click on the red rectangle. You'll notice that this column is now bright red, which means uBlock Origin will now globally block third party iframes for all websites you visit from now on. You can see that the cell for local third party frames is a faded shade of red. This only means that local column inherited its blocking rule from the global column. If you wonder what an iframe is, the simplest explanation is that it's basically a website within a website. You see iframes all the time when you watch embedded YouTube videos on news outlets for example. Sometimes blocking iframes can result in breaking websites. If this happens and you don't have the time to figure out which iframes to allow, you can easily fall back. Just hover your mouse over the middle of the local third-party frame cell until you can see a grey rectangle. Click it and the cell now turns grey. Grey stands for noob, which means reversing whatever rule that cell inherited from its precedence. In this case, local third-party frames inherited blocking rule from the global rule on third-party frames. So local noob will allow all third-party iframes to load on this website. 
Blocking iframes is essential, because it's every website's weakest link, and malicious actors often use them to inject malware to attack end users. If you ever saw those scammy Adobe Flash updates, those were iframes. But some iframes bear legitimate content and let's say you want to allow only that legitimate content and not the rest of the potentially dangerous iframes. For example, many websites embed YouTube videos and you'll notice you can't play them anymore. This has an easy fix. Scroll through the hostname panel until you find youtube.com hostname. If you hover your mouse over the middle of the local cell in the third column, next to YouTube hostname, you'll be able to see a grey rectangle again. So click it to create a local noob for YouTube iframe only. Your global rule is to block all third-party iframes. This means that when you are on a website with a YouTube iframe, it is blocked because it inherited its blocking rule from the global column. With creating local noob for this YouTube iframe, you allowed only the YouTube iframe to load locally on this page, while the remaining iframes are still blocked by the global rule. If you want to remember this rule so the next time you visit this website YouTube iframes are allowed, just hit the padlock icon on the top left corner of the uBlog origin panel. If you want to load YouTube iframes on every website we ever visit, just do the same procedure but in the global cell to set the global noob. So now we have made our web browsing much more secure and we learned how to unbreak certain websites. We are ready to move on to the next level. And I can do this! We're going to learn how to block scripts. Blocking scripts will significantly improve your privacy and give you much more control over your web experience. You'll reduce your bandwidth consumption even more, your hardware will be drained much less and websites will load in milliseconds. Many websites embed social media plugins and trackers that for sure are needed for basic functionality. You know, there is no need for the presence of Twitter, Yahoo, Facebook or even Google on this website. And you know what? Their presence is redundant on every website outside of their own platforms. So let's get rid of them for good, shall we? Good rule of thumb. If it's not red, make it dead. First one down the line, Facebook.net. Hover your mouse in the global cell and click on the red rectangle. Don't reload the page yet, we have more work to do. Google, no reason to be here. LinkedIn, get the fuck out of here. Twitter, it's time to ban you for once. Yahoo's time is long overdue. Don't leave the website. After we are done with this, don't forget to hit a padlock to make this a permanent rule set. The only problem is that we are blocking these websites globally, even when we visit them directly. To unbreak them on their own platforms, all we need to do is to set up local noobs for each of them individually. Very easy. This is the easy mode in a nutshell. It could be summed up as allow all block exceptionally strategy. Everything that's not in the static filters is allowed unless you blocked it yourself with the dynamic filtering. With this mode, you considerably boost your online security and somewhat improve your privacy too. It is extremely helpful to use this mode especially with all your financial accounts as this will protect you from numerous phishing attempts by blocking them before you can fall for them that everybody won't see it. The next mode would be the opposite of the easy mode. Block all, allow some. The medium mode is even officially recommended by the uBlock Origin developer as the most optimal balance between privacy and convenience. You can enter the medium mode by setting a global rule to block all third-party scripts. Remember to click the padlock to save it permanently. The goal of the medium mode is to eliminate the number of domains connected to and get it as close to number one as possible. The more domains you connect to, the more you expose your privacy. So if in the easy mode we selectively chose a handful of third-party domains to block scripts on, in the medium mode we block scripts on all of them by default. This means that in order to unbreak some websites, we are going to have to set local noobs to some domains to bring the basic functionality back. Of course, if you stumble upon a new website and don't want to spend time figuring out which host names to noob to unbreak it, you can set local noob for third-party script cell to temporarily fall back to the easy mode. If you want to, you can click the padlock to set uBlock Origin to load the easy mode for this website and continue in medium mode for the rest of the web. But this would allow all third-party scripts, legitimate or malicious ones to unbreak websites in medium mode without setting local noobs for third-party script cell is a matter of trial and error. In the beginning, you are going to have to invest some time into this, but most websites are still readable without any interaction. 
the more you use medium mode, your growing rule set will gradually require less and less attention from you to fix web pages. When you are in the medium mode, you become more comfortable with dynamic filtering over time. You'll start to understand how a lot of hostname requests work. This would enable you to activate more third-party filters in the static filtering. This way, uBlock Origin can help you blog more. In your third-party filters pane, check this list. All uBlock Origin's filters, Easy List, Peter Lau's Ad Server, Easy Privacy, Malware Domain List, and Malware Domains. Compared to the easy mode, medium mode will reduce your privacy exposure to a minimum. Hard mode is an expansion of the medium mode. If medium mode is block all allow some, then hard mode is block like your life depends on it. Oh, they pull him by his, his... You enable hard mode by setting a global blocking rule for the third party cell. Along scripts and iframes, uBlock Origin will now deter all third party media, CSS and image content. The benefits of this mode is their absolute elimination of online profiling, provided you properly protect your browsing habits by compartmentalization. I explained how compartmentalization works in my previous video, so if you are not familiar with it, be sure to check it out. In this mode, you definitely will break almost every website you visit, but you'll be surprised by how many of them are readable without any interaction or with a single click. I'm curious to know which mode you ended up with, so please do let me know in the comments. If you have any questions regarding uBlog Origin, feel free to post them here and I or someone else in the comments will do our best to answer duly. Subscribe if you are new and share this video if it helped you. Thanks for watching.